Hello everybody and welcome back to LMM and if you're enjoying what you're seeing on the channel at the moment how about giving this video a like and maybe subscribing to the channel to help us grow and perhaps even check out our Patreon. Today we've returned to the Stafford Barn Model Railway Show so enjoy a tour round looking at the wonderful layout here in attendance. This year the railway was employed as a way of bringing people from the car park down to the Model Railway Show. First up was this absolutely massive layout that occupied a large portion of the roundhouse operated and looked after by our friends and sponsors of the modular railway series Grange and Hodder. This layout is loosely based upon the Fairbourne Railway in Wales and it's the first time that I've seen a layout modelled on this particular scale. Everything is absolutely massive and it's really exciting to see something like this that is just so very different and to see something that I've never seen modeled before. What's particularly exciting is the guys asked if I'd like to make a full video on this so that's something to keep an eye out for in the future because this thing is absolutely awesome. I particularly like the fact that all the points have weighted levers on them and are operated by the proper point lever and it really does capture the atmosphere of the Fairbourne Railway running along the beach towards the sea. And of course, if you're interested in some of the laser cut baseballs that they do, go check out the link in the video description. Amongst the many traders in attendance were our friends over at Elcut Creative who make a wide variety of highly detailed kits for your model railway and also have been a sponsor of the Making a Modular Railway Challenge so go check them out in the video description as well. Also in the roundhouse was Stanley Midland. It's the exhibition layout of the Midland group of the Gauge 1 Model Railway Association which means they're big trains with a selection of live steam making its way around the layout. Now I've always found live steam this scale to be fascinating. You get the sound and the smell of an actual locomotive working its way and what more appropriate place to have it than inside the roundhouse surrounded by full-sized steam machines. But at this scale one really has to admire the amount of engineering and finesse that goes into making these little mechanical marvels work. They really are quite fantastic. Moving to the world of Double O, we have Beckwick, a fictitious location situated in southern England, some 40 miles from London, which means there's a lot of EMUs running on the third rail, which was common of the X Southern network. It also features a lot of sound fitted locomotives for all of that true immersion and have plenty going on with a mass of trains arriving and departing to the busy platform.
size of the ones that we Keeping with double O but moving to modern era was West Coast Cement, a DCC controlled layout featuring sound fitted locomotives covering the privatization era of locomotives and rolling stock spanning from the 2000s through to present day. The idea with this layout was that Saturday would feature stock from 2000 through to 2010 and Sunday would feature 2011 through to present day. Another layout built by the Hornby magazine team with assistance from Key Model World was a 12mm bridge, a TT120 layout that really shows what you can achieve with this new scale, particularly when you compare what you'd be able to fit into this space with double ohm. It also highlighted some of the current drawbacks from this gauge, with an extremely limited amount of rolling stock and locomotives available, really limiting the period that you can actually model. Now, Hornby have got plenty of stuff in the works, but at the moment, it does mean that you can basically do BR Great Eastern or a bit of modern day. However, it is cool to see this, and I'm excited to see how the scale develops. Going up a scale and back to double O, but down in scale of size of layout was a Glend Adam distillery, a micro layout based on a fictitious whiskey distillery somewhere in Scotland that was inspired by the Scotch whiskey traffic of the early 1960s. And as such, this layout sees wagons being delivered, marshalled, and then taken away by bigger locomotives.
With the layout getting much bigger and the gauge getting smaller, we moved to Dawlish Warren in N-Gage, a layout that aims to capture Dawlish Warren Station as it was before the old station buildings were demolished, together with a short section of the famous sea wall, with many of the important landmarks of the surrounding area included, and features such niceties as working signals in N, which is really quite impressive. Jumping back up to double O, we have Torigum, a fictional station set somewhere in North Devon. Depicting this line in its last days, it's now been closed to passenger service and it's only the freight trains that are still running sometime in the late 50s or early 60s. And I love a layout like this showing a railway on its last legs. With the models getting bigger again, this is Fen Street Yard in Ogage, a layout that was built to show that you don't need masses of room to have an absorbing layout in this scale, very much like my own skull, only this is significantly more impressive. The line is set as a private industrial line serving a private industrial estate towards the end of the railway's life, as goods is beginning to be taken away by road. Once again, I love this end of the railway feel that's going on with everything a little bit dilapidated. And I really do like layouts that show just what you can do with O. Fair to Middling is a double O gauge layout made of two separate modules. There's Eckeslike, a town dominated by the viaduct and substantial industrial red brick buildings of the Victorian era, and Appen Colliery, a mine scene. These two modules work together as Fair to Middling or can go out independently to shows on their own. It is set in a fictional industrial area in the north of England somewhere in the late 50s or early 60s towards the end of British Railway steam, with the NCB still using steam and a fleet of austerities around the mine.
Meanwhile, some of my guys had escaped the modular and had gone out to see what they could find to buy. Returning to the layout, and we have the end of the estate, an O-gauge shunting puzzle, depicting, like quite a few of the other layouts we've looked at, a private industrial estate with its railway coming to the end of its useful life. Once again, this shows just how much you can achieve in O-gauge in a relatively small space. Next up, and based in an imaginary place near to Great Yarmouth, the home of my fire engine, is Braden, set somewhere in the late 50s or early 60s and represents a quiet country branch line wandering its way through part of East Anglia. Staying with Double O was the fully DCC operated Bristol St Phillips, representing the passenger station and the first few sidings of the goods yard. The scenic break is provided by the long gone Barrow Road Bridge, which has been moved closer to the station than it was in real life. This layout really was a hive of activity, with trains coming and going all the time. There's nothing quite like a big layout in O, and that's exactly what the Charnwood branch is. It is massive. Based on the LNWR's Charnwood Forest Railway, this boasts a number of exciting features, such as the working turntable, fully working signals throughout, and the centerpiece of this incredible viaduct. As such a large layout with so many different sections, there were always trains moving around, and it was an absolute joy to watch it operate.
going to be like um, the old two millimetre Copenhagen fields or you know, everything. One of the funny things is we've we got a terminal station yeah. which was built to four track shed. Yeah. Originally they were going to take the line and go loop it down yeah, yeah. onto the main line. Yeah. I think the main that the main in there for the big, big low coast yeah, yeah. to go through. And now moving on to something a little bit different. Oakhurst Town is a mythical station on the South Eastern Railway, set in the Kent area in the 1880s. The idea is to convey the atmosphere and general appearance of the railway at that period, which means that most of the stock is scratch built and has been built over a period of some 30 years. And all except one building are over 20 years old, having been rescued from a previous larger layout. Getting a lot smaller and dropping back down to end gauge was Rufus Lane, a fictitious wayside halt on a main line. Being double tracked, there was plenty going on with trains passing midsection, and it was a great example of showing just how much you could fit into end gauge into a small space and still get a decent run for your trains. I've just done 15 of the eight wheeler hopper wagons. All right. Like the rail freight. Yeah, yeah. I think they're MEAs or whatever they are. I always lose track of them. IAA, whatever they are. Leah! All I've got to do is find the wheel. One of the most interesting layouts for me was of course Ruston and Hornsby Sheaf Ironworks, depicting part of the factory in Lincolnshire during the early 1940s, where the factory would have been churning out engines for large marine craft, minesweepers, landing craft, patrol boats, submarines, all sorts. And of course, this was the company who built my own Ruston 48s. So for me, it was really special to get an idea of the factories where my one-to-one -one scale model would have been assembled. Keeping with an industrial theme and double O, Shovel Head Halt is a layout based on a what if idea in Burton on Trent, where Bass had another little station yard on its vast network to the main line and gives lots of opportunities for shunting wagons back and forth.
And finally, we come to the last layout in this video, Sutton Bank TMD, a small three-siding depot with sound-fitted locomotives for that ambiance of diesels trundling around shed, representing the 2000s through to the present day. And so that brings us to the end of this video, looking at the Statfold Barn Model Railway Show. And if you're thinking, Laurie, there was one there we wanted to see, and that was your modular, well, that'll be coming up in the next video when we take a look at the final thing of this. So thank you all very much for watching. If you have enjoyed this, how about clicking over there for last year's show, down there for, I don't know, something else, Model Railway related. And that, let me know in the comments below if you've enjoyed it. And look forward to seeing you, well, look forward to seeing us when we show you this thing and the final construction of the Modular Railway and if it actually worked. Because it's been uh, an experience. Ta-da!